Welcome back my dudes, and um, well, from the title of the video, you can guess what happened. Um, cops have defected my car in three ways, uh, headlights and exhaust pretty much, and well, there's not much to do other than to fix those things, and well, yeah, so here we go building a whole new exhaust for that piece of shit, no, I love it, it's awesome, but so we've got some scrap pieces that we're going to clean up and we're probably going to use in the build. However, um, the plan is from head is back, basically a, a single three inch exhaust. And luckily a lot of this is um, three inch. I've got some two and a half inch because I've got to do some pipe expanding on the car and taking off and I've got to order some stuff, etc, etc. But for now, I've got to clean these pieces up and get them ready for um, kind of cutting them up a little bit and putting them on the car. Main thing is basically just cleaning them up and taking off the brackets um, so that they're ready to, when we mock them up, put the brackets on and cut the flanges when necessary and well, they're all that jizz jazz. So let's get into it. So technically the cops didn't defect my car as they didn't yellow ticket it as the, what they call it here in the land down under. I think because one of my relatives were burned for the day and then they ended up giving a fine for it being past the bodywork of the car, the exhaust being past the bodywork of the car. Yet yeah, it's been close to a week, yeah a week and a half, and we still haven't received a fine as of yet. So it's, I mean touch wood that because I'm trying to do the right thing that we kind of just buried our way out of the system. I know that sounds silly, but I mean, it's happened a few times now, and I'm quite lucky and grateful that I've been spared the financial abuse. However, touch wood. So my dudes, we've gotten a delivery today. We've still got a few more deliveries for the exhaust, but I can show you the general layout. So we've got the headers that come down. Plan is basically some 45 degree mandrel, two and a half inch bends down to a um, two and a half inch into uh, two, two and a half inch into a single three inch um, white pipe. And may or may not reuse this pipe we've got the material to replace this whole pipe if need be um i would like to reuse it since it has a, a flex join um so it's just good for movement for the exhaust etc um however plan is y pipe into this go around um underneath the car it does need to y at about this point here um not y so turn and turn back as that goes in just underneath the drive shaft it's a pretty straight shoot then up here, it's where it gets a little tricky. Gonna need to have a little bend that comes up um, to kind of avoid the diff and axle, but we've got this stuff to do that, so I'm not too stressed about that. And then we've got extra spare material just to be sure. Probably won't really need to use it. And then there'll be a muffler about here and another Y pipe from a single three to a dual two and a half to have some nice little 45, just bend down and poke out. Just pretty stock like so um so my dudes we have all, almost all of our parts we got our splitter things yesterday but i thought okay i thought these might be a bit closer also they're not really two and a half inch they're like 2.75 um which is okay it's fine because we're putting two and a half in here and well, up up this way with where the headers are um, that's two inch, which we're stretching out to just below two and a half inch to go into the mandrel 45 bends, which will go into here. However, I wanted to use a second one for the tips at the end because I was going to go just a dual tip, trying to make it a little stock with some for um, little pie cut bends um, down just to make it look a little sleek. Um, however, um, that will not work. Luckily, they're just off of eBay. Um, the um, aluminized steel, apparently. Um, and so basically, we're gonna attempt to make our own Y join. Now, you may be, I mean, I'm not much of a fabricator, but I mean, I've gotta learn somehow. 
if I want to build more exhausts and stuff in the future. So what we've got here is some old two and a half inch stainless off of um, another exhaust I had in a different car, old Subi. Um, and so the plan is we're going to cut it here, we're going to cut it here, and we're going to try and basically, I, I don't know how to explain it, but like have them merge, weld it, and then cut it and stretch out the top bit a little bit to fit a three inch. I don't know how it's going to work, um, but I mean, the only way to kind of find out is try to do it. So let's get into it. There we go. That should be a bit straighter of a cut. Plus, it's time to get rid of the manky ass exhaust. As you may have seen, or you will soon see, that it's pretty clapped out. Um, the resonator's been pretty much flattened. Um, the exhaust shop that did it beforehand built it pretty low. I can like stuff it another two inches up into the like tunnel. Um, so I'm pretty confident of my ability to do that. And um, yeah. She. Well, my dudes, so basically doing a bit more cleaning up and kind of getting an idea of the exhaust and what we've done, we have cut off, I have to switch cameras, this is annoying. Cold, okay, so what we've done, we've cut off our flex pipe simply because, I'll just show you, don't get me wrong. It's a quality flex pipe, but it's seen abuse, and to be frank with you, I'd rather not run the risk of it possibly leaking in the future, um, if it would have scraped more, or whatever, and, I don't know, just eliminate, just eliminate that kind of monstrosity, because it is ugly, and this is my dream exhaust, so to speak, so I'd like to have a nice, good quality looking piece of um, metal underneath the car, but... From that, we've um, cleaned up an old 3 inch flange that we can reuse, as well as a pie cut. Um, gotten it pretty close to being pie, uh, I hope. Um, first time kind of building this stuff, but I have I have an idea, so only a real thing to do now is do it and get the experience necessary. Um, so what I'm thinking, from the headers down to the wide pipe that we bought off eBay, um, probably going to cut the do a flange there for the fact of we might um, do headers in the future um, probably and then we'll have this pipe our cat and um, resonator stuff um, and yeah basically what I'm gonna do now is it's weird looking through the camera picking up stuff <laughs> because I can't see through the phone but um, I'm gonna use hydrochloric acid to basically clean up these, get rid of rust, get rid of a lot of the shit on these because um, most of this exhaust I plan to TIG weld at a good family friend of mine. Um, basically, he's gonna show me the gist of TIG welding. Um, and yeah, hopefully. Just cleaning up. I'm not cleaning up, using acid to get rid of a lot of the rust and make it a bit easier. And all the charcoal crap to make, um, well, the carbon shit make it a bit easier to weld, um, it'll be clean, basically, and um, when you're pouring the stuff to do any sort of cleaning, in terms of metal cleaning and stuff, make sure you've got the right bucket. So this is kind of the result of that, however, we still need to go along with the wire wheel and get this, this, the paint off, it's loosened it a little bit, but um, yeah, this paint's actually pretty good, whatever it is, I don't know what it is, it must be um, that BHT stuff I ordered, because, damn. It wants to stay on. Um, same with this one. But, it made all the carbon stuff a lot easier to come off, which is nice, which is good. And um, it's a bit hard to see on camera, but 
it cleaned up these quite nicely. Um, I scored a lot of this spare stuff at work, um, it was going to get chucked out, and I asked if I had it, and they're like, yeah. Um, so basically, no, the plan is now to get these cleaned up probably a little more, and, oh, whoops, yeah, pretty much prep them for assembly, welding, etc. The two and a half inch dual to single three inch white pipe is going to be here, and this will be the start of the rest of the exhaust, basically. Um, and for this, as you saw, there was a massive lip on this pipe, and so it took forever to just massage it down with the grinder and the die grinder to get it. So the flange would finally fit nicely on there. It's really nice and snug. However, as you can see, it's going to be super tight. So, but luckily, since we're doing TIG, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to weld the inside lip here. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, worst case, wor worst scenario, just take the nut and um, wash it out. I might, yeah, take the nut and wash it out and I'll um, weld up in there. I'm not too worried about um, this being warped as we're probably never going to use it. This. But there's no point really taking it out because we wouldn't be able to really repair it anyway, I don't think. I'd rather leave it in. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not too worried about that. And well, my dudes, a few days, a few days later, yeah, I thought it was a week. No, it's just a few days. Um, basically, getting stuff sorted, you know, like it's camera angle, let's just switch this. So today is a Sunday and we haven't got our 45 mandrel degree bends yet so we're going to be doing other stuff in the meantime because I got all my welding gear back from work finally so I have that all back now to do some exhausty things so basically as you know this is my Y pipe at the end tips for those dual 2 inches I did blue them up because you know I felt like it I was like hmm I want to be a bit ricer today so I'm being a little bit ricer today um, so yeah they're yeah, cool. Yeah, this one didn't want to blow up so much. It was much harder to blow up. I'm not quite sure why. I don't really have never really blewed anything before. So yeah, regardless, um, there was a heap of carbon and stuff in here before. I thought I cleaned it well before. Hell nah. So, why wheel? Oh shit! Don't knock over now. Why wheel? Just drilling in and out, and that cleaned it up real nicely. I think it shows a little more on these little off cuts. I cut and cleaned up. These are for the mating points between the headers and the um, basically dual to single connector down closer towards the bottom of the car. Um, it's to basically make that jump from two inch to two and a half inch as this is two and a half inch tube and this is two and a half inch pipe. The difference is that pipe is um, in the diameter, tube is at a diameter and so it's a little I can't see it you can't wait really, oh wait I'll get that one it's a little smaller just a little bit so that's that I hope I didn't scratch the inside of that too much I really like this actually this is really really blue really cool but I digress I'm going about too many things now to meet that gap yes meet the gap we have um, exhaust expanding Menandy trinkety canandies, but um, there was a circlip here to stop it from going off, but that was not for our needs, as I think this is for going up in the car and then doing it when it's in the car. I need it for smaller pieces out here to, uh, to expand it and meet the gap. However, there was no real good way of securing it in the vice, because I would just end up as you can see on this one, they blew this one as well just to test it and to try and get it to expand. But for this one, that's the vice creating that. And that looks pretty ugly to be honest. And so I wasn't too happy with that. So this is why we're doing this. So that I can also weld the nut to the stud on top of this. And now this does not come apart really. Um, and yeah. Look at that man, oh okay, dokie okay, man. We're doing introduction time now. Okay, so this thing, Viper Unimig 
185 little 10 pan mailer box welder pretty good i mean for a more on the not so budget side but you're on the budget side but a little bit in, high, in a few higher brackets you get a pretty good hobbyist machine you know it can do mig tig stick but i uh, can't do um aluminium tig but it can do mig um mig aluminium which is an interesting one so I'm kind of grateful for that. Yeah, it can do a lot. Just need to invest in some more torches and stuff and probably do some more shit. But regardless, let's do the exhaust spander thingies. Yeah, well then, safety lesson. Get yourself some good crap. Because you get some pretty nasty sunburns. You can blind yourself. And burn yourself. So, invest in some good safety. Please, for the sake of yourself, so I'm glad I did, is um, a little really thick shit. Go probably up to a 5mm kind of standard in terms of a wire. Um, so 5mm likes, you know, a good, a good, a good pumping, a good pumping around the 10.6 to 11 mark, I find. And then for the um, thingo, for volts, a bit higher on the uh, than standard, I think I like with um, what's it called? Five more stuff, so yeah, let's do it. A little bit more appropriately, at yeah, first they were a bit weak, then I did them a bit strong, that's our result. Pretty good, I'd say. And here's the tricky part. We're doing tips, bruh. Yeah? That's what it sounded like when the city are, but regardless, we've got some tips we gotta do. And so um I don't know how to do it, but let's just do it. And also on the budget, which I'm happier with, because I'm also um recycling old parts. Um, and I didn't have to pay full price on the catalytic converter or resonators, um, as they all from a previous project. Um, that project was a 98 WX wagon, and the exhaust that came with it was an off-the-shelf 3-inch exhaust from X-Force. And, you know, they have quality products, so I was more than happy to recycle the parts. Um, since I think it's a bit of a waste to just buy completely new stuff and then put the old stuff on the ground trash-wise. So it's like, dude, let me just re clean it up, paint it, Make it nice again, you know? So uh, that's what I'm doing. Sight. Oh my god, holy moly, hasn't really pen penetrated on that fight, so we'll do the little ones on the back here, and then we'll, um, shit, hell, then we'll, um, put the 3-inch here on, oh my god, that's, oh, that's too beautiful, dude, holy shit, that's actually really good, eh? Fudge me, hit now, let's have a look. What is it? Oh my god, we just have to tack it on the sides and press it. Oh my god, look! Now that fit, man. How clean it is on the sides. The top's a little tall, that's like to be expected. But oh, wow, I didn't. Wow! So with the exhaust, I overestimated how much material I'd need and like how much space I had. Unfortunately, however, live and learn. Um, so I kind of wasted a flange on one of those three-inch pipes, um, that I was gonna use, but instead I just turned it into a um an S into the um cat pretty much straight off the bat, and I thought I'd be have enough room for a second um resonator. Unfortunately, I did not. So I mean, I only made one resonator, one muffler. But I, I mean, I'm still happy with that, and with how it came out, um, I definitely could have probably 
practiced a little bit more welding and gotten um more consistent finish. But I mean, I'm the kind of person that does in terms to learn. I'm not much of a, a practicer. I just I just keep doing it, and um I get I I I get I don't know. Other, otherwise, it's kind of pointless. I don't know. I'm kind of wasting stuff. So that's just how I feel though. So with these flanges, um, you really want to have a bit more heat and um, wire feed. So what I like to do and what I've been taught is basically put your heat into the flange because it's bloody thick. It's like 8 to 10 mil a lot of the time. Put your heat into that and then recycle it um, like a fast back into the tube. So it's like you're on the flange for longer and then when you're pointing your gun towards the tube, it's um, less time. You're not making holes and stuff. Two thousand years later. So as you saw yesterday, I fitted up kind of the, the muffler kind of area, whatever. But we've got to trim this a little bit down to make it a little bit tighter. So basically, shorten this. Um, so yeah, pretty simple. Let's get into it. When it comes to drilling metal, I always find that um, smaller bits require more speed. Lower bits require lower speed, um, and you always want to try and find that good amount of pressure um, to try and get those curls. Um, here I've got to drill M8 holes, so 8.5mm, uh, an M8 bolt is actually 7.8mm I think, um, wide. Um, and to finish off the little edges around the hole, a quick little tip is what I do is I just use a size 13 drill bit. And I just give the edge a little chamfer, make it a little nicer, clean it up a bit. And that's towards the um, wife pipe, towards the front of the car, but I really did try my best to keep everything as low, uh, sorry, as high as possible. Um, the only thing I'm not happy with, as you can see right there, that's, it's not quite the angle I want. I wanted it to be a little more um, flat to the ground, that bottom face, but it's poking a little bit. It should be okay, I hope. Hi Doisy. Oh. And the final skipper pop. So, as you can tell, lovely old daisies under the car. Join dog Judy. But taking all the exhaust pieces off and out, including right. including the hangers and stuff, ready for painting, cleaning, assembling, etc. etc. You get the gist of it. So here we go. And um, I'm gonna try and um Finish all these parts off, clean them up. I think you get the jizz germs.
So, only knowing this now, with the MIG welder, with, you want to go basically higher heat, smaller weld puddle, and go super fast. Um, I was building up too much of a puddle and building up too much heat. So I was blowing holes quite a bit, unless I was going tack, tack, tack. But that's where my technique was wrong. And um, I now know. Luckily, um, a good mate showed me. However, um, live and learn. I, this will work, I'm pretty sure. I don't think there will be any holes or any exhaust leaks. Um, but in the future, um, definitely need to practice on that. Well, well, we have the ugly part done. The really ugly part. I mean... Jesus Christ almighty. But now we get to do the pretty part. And I'm not going to be showing footage of that because we're going over to the mate's place to do that. And I don't really want to, um, what's the word? Um, you know, just be comfortable, be cool. Speed holes, as I call these. And I just extra, drilled some extra holes for aesthetic. I think it looks a little bit cool. Um, yes, I know. Um, I did my best with what I have. Um, but I'm getting better because oh, I can't really, I don't have the other one here, but I did some better welds on the, the mid pipe section and these I just have to fill up and keep going and kind of like, yeah, it's like she means. So here we are, we're in the ghetto booth and getting better, getting better at welding, getting a bit more consistent. It's a little boog boogie, but you know, got to start somewhere, and we're in the booth, ghetto booth, as I might say, to test out some paint. So we've got some, I'll just grab it, or I'll show you. We've got some BHT Flame Proof Primer. Apparently this is really good stuff. Um, unfortunately it didn't have the black colour coat, so on top of this primer, I'm going to be using some high temperature engine enamel. Um, and I'm kind of hoping that, um, it will be, will, um, the primer will set a good base for the engine enamel to stick to, and hopefully it won't burn off, because I've done engine enamel before, and it just kind of burnt off close to the headers, um, and so it was useless, but hopefully this flame-proof primer, um, makes it adhere and last a little better and longer. So here it is, you know, I'm pretty happy. I left um, this untouched in terms of paint because that's I colored it for a reason. Painted this because it's been scuffed up, etc. This is stainless steel, doesn't need it. Um, this painted it because all of this is mild steel, it needed it. I know it looks a bit funny with the tape and stuff, but it was to prevent rust. So I did the best there I could um, to prevent that. And yes, little patches and stuff with tape um, because it was scuffed it might rust, so I just did that preventatively. However, for the most part, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. You know, they're a little bit ugly, but that's part of my um, bad fitment and stuff. And so, you know, my friend, he did the best he could, and I'm really happy with it. He really did turn a cockamamic thing into something reasonable and nice and cool. So I'm really happy with that, eh? Um, don't like how I used a mild steel pie cut here because I had to paint it then afterwards but it's okay got the exhaust done and cool and nice and then after here I painted it because it's all mild and all other weird sorts of steel so um yeah but now it looks reasonable now the welds here yes they are mine they are ugly I tried cleaning them up um however I don't think they'll crack I did, I did have a really big comet in terms of a welding pool going on all the way for a lot of them um my friend did this, but I went back over it again because there was a few spots that I thought there might be holes, so I just made sure. Um, that's mine. This is already a pre-made three inch cat that was teed up and I'm just recycling it and it fit perfectly. And these are mine. They're a bit ugly. However, I think for the most part, they're good. Um, and 
and hold. Now time to install the thing. Um, and well, it was a reasonably easy install. The headers, um, I had to massage a little bit. Um, in terms of like trying to shuffle them on, get them on on the right angle, it was a little bit difficult, but I got there in the end. Um, rest of the exhaust fit on pretty damn well. But one of the mounts I had made, the stock transmission mount, unfortunately, um, I need to change the design or whatever. It just vibrated way too much. So temporarily, I've just taken it off. Um, as you may hear in uh, one of the sound videos, uh, there's a bit of vibrating, rattling going on. So I had to take that off for now. It's fine. There's another two hangers, one in the mid, one in the rear. Um, but I have to figure something out on that transmission um, part. 